So today I wanted to talk about a track that was unreleased between Jay-Z and Nas. Yes, a collab by Jay-Z and Nas that we ain't never heard before. But first I want to get into Meek Mill responded to 50 Cent's comments that he wanted to punch him in his face during that whole Drake beat. Now by now we done seen the whole Twitter beef after that whole store situation. You know, Meek Mill and Nicki Minaj was going back and forth on Twitter. I mean, and they was throwing some heavy stuff on each other. You hear me? They was airing all the dirty laundry, y'all. I mean, if we had any mysteries about anything that day, we sure found the answers. You hear me? That I ain't gonna go into all that. However, shortly after that, 50 Cent was on Nicki Minaj's Queen Radio Show. So, you know, he has an alliance with Nicki because Nicki is from the same place he's from. And, you know, that's how we do in New York. You gotta rep your people, you know what I mean? But anyway, 50 Cent has been on a press tour promoting his new ABC TV show, For Life, that is based on the life of Aaron Wallace, who is the fictional character who is covering the real life of Isaac Wright Jr., a man who was falsely imprisoned, became a lawyer, started litigating other cases for other inmates while he fought his own case, where he was given a life sentence. And not only was he given a life sentence, that made him the first man to be convicted under the Kingpin statute for drugs. Now that's the same statute they putting on R. Kelly right now. But y'all see, Isaac would have been one of the forgotten like many of them if his prosecutor wasn't convicted on so many fraudulent things he had been doing, his integrity wouldn't have been in question, and they would have never listened to this man, in my opinion. Most troubling, Bissell's other cases must now be reviewed, like the case of Isaac Wright, given life for being a drug kingpin. Last month, a judge ordered him retried because Bissell coerced witnesses against him. Seven years ago, I was a voice among the chorus that nobody would listen to. And that should be a hard eye opener for the justice system, period. Because just because this guy got caught doing his dirty deeds and sending all these people to prison and probably did so much, you know, crooked stuff to get it done, how many other prosecutors are doing the same thing? Mm-hmm. But anyway, back to the whole Meek Mill situation. So 50 Cent did an interview on The Breakfast Club with Charlamagne the God, Angela Yee, and Envy. And he talked about the Drake and Meek Mill's beat with a very biased tone, but but you know 50, he's trying to keep it real. People who pick fights for people who don't want to fight, those are punks. Like there's a, a punk, Meek Mills, when, when I ran into him finally, he said, yo, come here, let me talk to you. I need to talk to you like a man on the side, put me to the side. He was talking and I was looking at him and I wanted to punch him. The stuff that he said, I wanted to punch him. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I just looked at him and I was like, yo, I don't understand why you felt like that. You see what I'm saying? Because he, he was like he's a battle artist that's where you come from mm-hmm. so when he says something to Drake and then doesn't respond and Drake says something back I'm going what happened I was waiting for you to, like you was coming in the yet then with that and then you didn't say nothing back and he was like he felt like I was kicking him when he was down because it, uh, how he felt with you know the momentum that Drake had, but it was a, it, I understand how you felt because I felt the same way. It was disappointment from a hip hop fan, right? I thought Mook was about to eat him up. Yeah, well, yeah. get busy, like then, and that's what he do anyway from the beginning, you know. And then you had to respect him for saying, "Let's talk to the side." That's right? why, yeah, yeah. That's why I know it never turned into anything. And you know, I got to agree with Fifty Cent because Meek was a beast when it came to battling. I'm swear, when that whole Drake and Meek beef was going on, I was like, yo, y'all think it's funny? Wait till they wake that Meek beef up. Because Meek was a battle rapper in Philly. You know what I'm saying? Even when he had them dusty ass cornrows. Y'all remember? Yeah. Break down, take down. Shorty, keep your mouth shut. This is what we do, one or two. You ain't about that? I don't give a fuck. I leave you stuck like a mousetrap. Middle of the city, tell your brother to get with me. I be stumping with a 50 collar, but they holler. Then I can jump out his dick and we be riding with them solid. <laughs> Like a monster, revolve on my lap, barrel full of black tiles. I lick it at the squadron, roll up, like hold up, start spitting while I'm driving. Pill off the roll up, you niggas better slow up before you bang the fuck out. I ain't let it fling, blow your brain, go the fuck out. All over your shirt, since the young and I was buck wild. All up in the dirt, mind screaming, get the fuck out. Know where I was raised at, softly I played that. Whoever I'm around, I hold it down like a wave. Can't you disappear? Hope is pro 
focus We leave the suckers like they Jay Rice Wide open in the field they get real You block slow motion and the bills rolling in just like a coaster Gotta catch up to sleep on late night Stick him with the toaster Make him put it all in like he was playing poker Cause I remember days, nights I couldn't even think right Niggas getting murked out I'm clutching on that thing tight I wouldn't even blink like Blink once, blink twice Cause that'll get your life snatched Faster than a Tyson match now, 50 Cent never elaborated on the exact context of the conversation between him and Meek during that time, but I'm going to assume Meek's tone was something like, yo, you know, Drake is big, he's the biggest thing in hip-hop, I go against him, he's going to destroy my career, and I, cause that's the only thing I could see 50 Cent having that reaction, yo, what, what you talking about, man, I'm going to punch him, what, you know what I'm saying? But again, that's just speculation, I don't know what the context of the conversation was. But anyway, after the Breakfast Club interview, the next day, Meek got on his social media and decided to post this. It is not a coincidence all these people bringing my name up at once. LOL. I've been moving too right and certain people not feeling it because most of these guys can't get in the room. I've been outside for years in the field. Now I'm helping changing laws now and freeing people. So 50 late or for Meek because you felt that same way about Gail King and that's how he's feeling right now. And that's how I'm feeling. Just leave him alone. Y'all got a lot of people to pick on, just leave our brothers alone, okay? But at the end of the day, Quentin Miller did chime in this week as well, y'all. He shared a deleted video where he was explaining how because Meek Mill blew up the spot that he ghost wrote for Drake, he's ruined his career opportunities behind that. You know, a lot of people have been uh, congratulating me and sending me messages and shit about uh, the five-year anniversary of If You're Reading This and shit. And, you know, I look on socials and I see like producers and you know other people that were involved with the artists and they get to talk about how proud they are of the shit you know and you know it's different for me um it's 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 pretty much taboo for me to even talk about it you know I, I pretty much try to act like it don't even exist the biggest the biggest project of my entire career right and it's, that's that's pretty strange but Unfortunately, you know, I don't have the good memories about it that everybody has. You know, my good memories were all murdered, you know what I'm saying? Like, the day uh, Meek Mandela, you know, y'all y'all buying that bullshit since he came out of jail. Like, he's... whatever. The day he, you know, put my name out there, you know, and it just blew up my whole spot. And, you know, that shit just fucked everything up for me, bro. And it's so crazy because... Man, it not only did it mess that up, but in the confusion of that shit, you know, I, me and, and DJ Drama and Cannon, like that whole side, we had our ties were severed because of that shit. Because it was just so much confusion, and everybody was trying to find out whose fault was it, and this and that. Like y'all just don't know what them phone calls was like. Y'all just don't know what them text messages was like. Like y'all don't know what that pressure was like it was a lot it was hot and um that's one of the biggest things i regret was was fucking up that relationship with them because in the end that nigga drake and, and me them niggas is best friends now they watch basketball games and they do shows and shit together you know so it's just like what the fuck was that even for what the fuck was all of that for you know like all the, the stress that it caused you know and i know it Everybody else is able to move on because everybody else's careers was established and shit. My career wasn't established. And I was looking at that if you're reading this moment, you know, at the time. When I, I definitely get where he's coming from because I write for people all the time. And I will never disclose it because I don't want them to later be like, yo, I ain't fucking with you. You know what I'm saying? That's people bread and butter. You know, and ghostwriters are real. Like, there's people that don't mind being in the background that's putting these lyrics on the top forefront. And they getting paid for it, but they getting paid silently. They don't need the fame and all that. And that's me. You know what I mean? I will never reveal who I wrote for because I don't want them to be like, yo, I ain't fucking with you, A's. But anyway, what's y'all take on the whole situation? What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments. Now, let's get into this track by Jay-Z and Nas that we ain't never heard before. Check this out, y'all. <laughs> Make 
flames, foot soldiers get cloaked in my vicinity. The O for O murder, criminal activity. Diamond encrusted bracelets, escape death, cars and yachts. I flaunt things that say success. So to the water turns my electric chair on. Inside a LeBaron trunk, got Pakistan hair on. I see a Jones, not a capo. The Picasso word painter, black Sinatra, rap King Cole, gangster, point blank body armor. I'm violence, you the Dalai Lama. You just holler drama. Oviedo Bugante, my own people that got me That's what I get for snooze and moving too sloppy Well I'm back brilliant, my brain's back in the building The lights back on in the fridge, you dig? Brand new and improved, stage two of my crew Okay, that was just a snippet though So y'all, let me know what y'all think Are we cashing it or trashing it? What's up? Let me know in the comments, okay? Make sure y'all like my video Hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the notification bell So y'all know when I upload another video And we can just continue our discussion But in the meantime, in between time Check out my other videos And leave a comment on those too, you know what I'm saying? But definitely, I want y'all to also make sure y'all check back for all that and some more. Peace. Now, shooty, you could call me ABA, New York, a bitch, and baby. When I speak, is never lazy. I be eating bitches daily. I'm an old school chick, chick with a new school hip. Get the boom, boom, whip. I be like some boom. Quick, corny bitches think they proper. Think I'm gonna have to pop her with a lip so sick. Call me over that and back. I got a big four fifth. Think I'm gonna have to shot the goalie bitch on this. Think I'm gonna have to block up.